Good morning, everybody. It's midnight and beyond. Welcome to my final Walking Dead video. As is tradition with every Walking Dead LP of mine, we are just going to discuss the choices that we made on this journey, and we'll discuss the alternate paths that we could have taken, uh, whether or not I would have regretted it or not, whether or not I'm okay with my choices, what I think about all the different branching paths. This game actually has quite a drastic amount of like alternate uh, thingies that could happen in it, even if it does result in like more or less the same story in the same place where everyone ends up. Just the stuff that happens throughout it, it was really surprising to see how varied it could be in certain parts of it. So I uh, give the game praise for that because that's always been a problem with Telltale games for me. But uh, this game, I think, really stepped it up in a lot of ways. So without further ado... Let's just have one final discussion video on The Walking Dead, and it's going to be a nice, calm, and peaceful one because I'm just so happy that everything turned out okay for the most part, and I adored this game more than any other Walking Dead game that came before it. And in case you seriously need me to tell you this, this video will be butt-loaded with spoilers, so be forewarned. We're just going to be going through all the choices and possibly discussing other Walking Dead games. So, yeah, make sure you're prepared for that. So starting us off with episode one, uh, you and 42% of players chose to let AJ go through the window in the train station. Alternate choice was uh, having us kill the walkers that had the key, but they left a note saying that they wished to have been left alone. And uh, there was no actual consequence for leaving the walkers alive. It's just a matter of of what you want to teach AJ, if you want to teach him about compassion, or if you want to make him a bit more, like, I'm not really sure what the word would be, but just, like, I guess a bit more ruthless, even though it's, like, a very minor situation. It's the first decision in the game, so, like, it's whatever you want to do. If you want to go ahead and kill the walkers, you get the key, you go in, and you just move on from it. And if you go through the window, or you have AJ go through the window, uh, there's nothing dangerous on the other side, so he just does it, and you're good to go. Just a matter of how you want him to go about solving his problems. Which becomes very important later on, as we all know. Uh, second choice, you and 48% of players went hunting with Lewis and a sim, so this is a bit of a big branching one, because like you miss out on an entire conversation or entire uh, gameplay segment, uh, depending on which one you go to. It's not like in season two where you get to kind of just choose the order in which you experience all the uh, split up parts. Uh, you just outright miss some of them, which is kind of unfortunate. So for this one, it allows you to grow your relationship with either Lewis and a Sim or Violet and Brody. Uh, I went with Lewis and a Sim simply because I adore Lewis, as we all know, and I wanted to spend more time with him. Now, he kind of disappointed me in this one, to be perfectly honest. Just It was sort of weird to see him beating up the... Uh, it was either, was it a dead walker or was it just like one that was still awake and he was just torturing it because he was caught in the trap? I don't remember, but like it was just kind of a waste of time and kind of obnoxious. I didn't really like that uh, part of the experience. You could have chosen to either uh, mess around with him or you could have uh, teamed up with a sim and uh, tried to hunt some stuff. And a sim uh, grows more fond of you if you don't. Uh, encourage Lewis with his uh, ridiculous game so uh, I'm glad that I got to get to know him a bit more and um, Lewis didn't hate me too much for it as for the Violet and Brody one I feel like that one would be more beneficial simply because uh, Sim never dies so if you want to just uh, have more time with Brody before she inevitably dies then it would be more in your favor or just in your best interest to go to, with that conversation instead you mainly spend it uh, fishing with Violet. It's sort of similar to how AJ's fishing at the end of the game, just that same little mini game, but with Clem. And uh, Violet just ta talks to you about uh, what she thinks of Brody and all that stuff. And you could sort of tell her how Brody feels because Brody's never able to get close to her. And she appreciates it if you talk to her about it, which is nice. So it's a, it's a nice little conversation. And then you uh, meet up with Lewis and the Sim afterwards. And then things go downhill because we find out that uh, stuff happens, uh, like with Abel, as we're going to get into with our next uh, thingy. Oh, you know, we had one more choice before that. Most detrimental choice. I feel like every episode has just like a really weird choice. Like, it doesn't matter all that much. But um, you and 66% of players convinced AJ to sleep on the bed. 
um, you either get him to sleep on the bed or you uh, don't say anything and then he just sleeps underneath the bed like at any point throughout the rest of the series. So, kind of weird. I'm glad that I got him to sleep in the bed and just be comfortable and know that there are moments where he can feel safe in this world. And then the more serious one of the fight with Abel. You and 70% of players attacked Abel rather than giving him food. It's just labeled as attacked, so I guess that gets uh, like the choice to either have Clem push him out the window or have AJ shoot him is grouped in the same thing because you can't kill him in this situation. You just uh, get him knocked out the window either way if you attack him in any sort of method. And then he'll get uh, attacked by walkers, which re results in him losing his arm in the next episode. <clears throat> if you didn't attack him, it ends up being a bit different, in which uh, he just takes the food and then leaves, and then he just sort of walks out the front door. Uh, no real confrontation, and then, like, uh, you see her there. It's just a matter of whether or not you wanted to risk it, and also teaching AJ, like, how to handle certain situations. So if you want to make, make him a bit more violent, then you would attack him, or you would tell AJ to do it. And uh, Brody definitely... Well, I feel like Brody would be mad to see the way either, like, what the fruit, you let a guy, like, get away, and, like, he uh, knows who we are and where we're located, all that jazz. But, like, the other situation, she was like, did you see him die? Did you see him, like, get eaten by the walkers? So if he, like, comes back at for us. And he did, so she wasn't wrong to have all those fears. And, like, it's it's really weird, honestly, talking about Brody right now. Just be like, because she was gone for so long. But um, go going back and looking through all the choices and everything, like, our group was really big and, like... We didn't lose that many people, thankfully. It wasn't like season two where we lose literally everybody, which was really stinking obnoxious. But um, it's kind of sad to see like the people that we lost along the way. And I kind of wish that we had more of a say in who we lost and when we lost them. Uh, but yeah, it's just sort of like episode one, you always lose Brody. Episode two, you always lose well, Brody and Marlon. Episode two, you always lose Mitch. And then it's sort of up to you for the rest of the episodes of who you want to lose. So I guess that's kind of cool, but um, I kind of wish it was like that for the first two as well, but oh uh, well. And then the final choice for episode one is you and 66% of players turn to Violet for help against Marlin. Uh, the other 34% of players went and asked Lewis for help. I went with Violet simply because um, I knew Lewis was Marlin's best friend, so I didn't think it would be easy to convince him to get on our side. Uh, you could convince either one of them, no matter what you do, so it's just a matter of what you say and all that jazz. So it is uh, possible either way. Um, Lewis, he basically just uh, gets in front of you like what Violet did. And then Marlon is a bit more angry about it because like they're best friends. And then even though I spent like the majority of my time with Lewis in this episode, I switched over to Violet because I had a really nice conversation with her like earlier in the episode when she visited us in our room. And then uh, I was able to convince her and it worked out well for me i was like i like growing my relationship with both of them at the same time because i just want to be friends with them first off but that changed very drastically later on as we all know and i was considering whether or not i wanted to discuss the uh character uh stats on uh, like what how we left characters feeling at the end of the episodes i guess we could go over them uh so for aj i just gotta like pull up different tabs on my computer instead of just like looking at one little list because uh, I want to have like, the exact stats for, like, um, when I played the game. So, when I finished episode one, I had 30, me and 31% of other players left AJ feeling ruthless. Um, that gets brought upon if you, uh, that gets brought upon if you tell him to save the last bolt for himself or stay quiet. Um, when, like, teaching him about, like, killing zombies i guess i'm not sure when this conversation takes place but like apparently just based on that one single conversation it determines the ruthless stat and then like you just have like little cliff notes on what he did and what he felt about certain things throughout the episode um there's also the possibility to i don't know how i don't know the number of stats for it but like uh the update stats on the walking dead wiki it says 58 percent of players or about 58 percent of players left him feeling hardened uh, that happens if you tell him to always aim for the head. And then around 15% of players left him feeling pragmatic if you tell him to never hesitate. So that's how that could turn out. Uh, for Lewis, we and 66% of players left him feeling heartbroken. Oh, poor Lewis. 
Uh, our only options are heartbroken and lost. Uh, he'll be heartbroken if you appeal to Violet, but if you appeal to him, then like he'll uh, feel lost because like he doesn't really know who to believe in. But I guess heartbroken, he is both lost and like he feels abandoned. I guess so. That's kind of unfortunate. I feel so bad. Like I remember like the first three episodes. Like I left like on such a bad note with him, but then like the final one is perfect. Oh, it's so sad. This game is really good and sad and stuff. Like, I just, I have not been able to think about anything else after finishing this, uh, the last episode. Like, it's the only thing that's been on my mind. Uh, Tennessee, you and 49% of players left him feeling bitter. Uh, that happens if you said that Marlon was a coward. Like, when he's asking, like, how, why did you lie to us about, like, what happened to Sophie and Minya? You said they died, all that jazz. Then, like, you could call Marlon a coward, then he becomes bitter. Uh, around 40% of players left him feeling resentful if you, that happens if you say that Marlon should have sacrificed himself, then 10 becomes resentful. Uh, around 30% of players left him feeling helpless if you said that, uh, Marlon made a mistake, so, like, he just doesn't really know what's right and wrong, I guess, if you say that. And, uh, around 6% of players left him feeling powerless if you stay silent. Okay. Up next is with Violet, she says, uh, me and 66% of the players left are feeling guilty. Um, that happens if you, uh, same thing with Lewis, there are only two different options. Uh, if you appeal to Violet, then she'll feel guilty because she, like, kind of betrayed her group by siding with a new person. But if you don't appeal to her and she just sort of watches from the sidelines, then around 42% of the players left are feeling horrified. So yeah, episode one doesn't really end on a good note for a lot of people. And then, like, for the other characters, uh, Brody always dies, unfortunately. Um, Marlon always dies. And then with Omar, Ruby, Mitch, Asim, Willie, and Rosie. Um, they just have, like, little cliff notes, like, how they feel about something. But, like, I can't find a list of all the different things it could say at the end of it. So I guess we're just going to move on to episode two, if that's okay. You know, because uh, season four doesn't start with, like, some backstory thing telling us how we got from season three to season four, it's just like, oh, hey, I got AJ now, we're gonna go now, it might actually be shorter than the season three Discussing Choice episode, because that one was, like, an hour and a half long, but maybe we're actually gonna get stuff wrapped up quicker this time, and also, there's only four episodes, so if I get somehow a topic, but then again, like, the Michonne Discussing Choice video was longer than the season two Discussing video, even though that game is only three episodes and then season two was five episodes i don't know and like the whole reason i'm having this conversation is to just like uh discreetly or inconspicuously make the video a bit longer without you guys noticing it even though i'm just mentioning it right now just because i want to see if i could magically top that uh the length of that episode even though that means i would have to edit it and i know that like next to nobody watches the discussing choices videos but whatever i still like doing it and i just wanted to have like one final chat about the walking dead before we said goodbye forever um, but yeah, episode two, Suffer the Children. How wonderful of a title. So episode two is a bit iffy because, as you remember, I was recording this when the game was first game released and uh, Telltale sort of went bankrupt while this LP was ongoing. So we were not able to look at the stats for the main choices uh, right when I finished the episode. So my stats percentages are probably a bit different from when uh, what they would have been if I had just played it on day one, uh, these were uh, the stat video I uploaded was recorded like right when episode three came out. So, and that's like basically when the stats got uh, updated for us. So this is the freshest list we have, I guess. So for the first choice it is, did AJ keep his gun? Uh, Lewis asks AJ to uh, give him his gun. So that like, just after what he did to Marlon, uh, you and 34% of players uh, gave AJ's gun to Lewis because just sort of trying to make amends with them and, like, uh, ease his worries a little bit more. If you do that, then Lewis gives the gun back to AJ right before they part ways in the forest. If you tell AJ to uh, keep his gun, though, then he'll just hold on to it and uh, Lewis just sort of drops. He's like, fine, whatever, I don't care. And then AJ has the gun in the forest then. Um, then you saw there's a 1% of players didn't intervene with AJ insisting on keeping the gun. And then 1% of players said nothing when AJ insisted on giving the gun to Lewis. So basically when AJ asks you if killing Marlon was okay or not, and you can tell him like it was justified or 
you need to atone. Uh, I assume if you tell him it was justified, then he'll want to keep his gun if you stay silent. But if you say he needs to atone, then uh, he will uh, insist on giving the gun to Lewis. And then that's how that works out. Then, as for the next choice, the good old confrontation with Lily. A uh, little fun fact about Lily. Um, I, when I was just looking up the information for the stats and everything, I saw on the Walking Dead wiki, Lily was originally supposed to be a character from the comics uh, of the same name. There was a character named Lily who uh, does some naughty things to the main protagonist's family. I'll just say that. I uh, don't want to spoil the comics for anyone if, they, if you haven't read them, but it's like really early on. But basically, uh, Lily was originally supposed to be this character from the comics, but um, she was not. They were they weren't able to do that because um, that Lily in the comics got a different backstory written for her. Uh, what happened to her like before the apocalypse? So they weren't able to do that, and have it like coincide with the backstory they gave for uh, Lily in the games. So because of that, they wound up changing the facts like apparently she is designed after that comic character but like they had it planned out all the way up until like episode three and it was around that time where it got changed to uh give her make her a different person which is kind of weird and it was like so far off to the point where like one of the achievements like the achievement you get uh after uh lily um leaves the group because like in in season one after she shoots Carly or Doug, then uh, you decide to either um, uh, leave her on the side of the road or take her with you anyway. And if you take her with you, then she steals the RV after you get out of it and then runs away and you never see her again. But basically, after she leaves the group, the achievement you get is called, like, Welp, What Now? But originally, when the game first released, it was called uh, On the Road to Wellsboro or something like that. Uh, if I could find the name of it real quick, I probably should have had it prepared. Woodbury, that's it. So, um, originally the achievement is called, was called, um, Woodbury Bound. Like, after she left Lee's group, then she would end up, uh, wherever she is in the beginning of the comics or whatever. Because I guess, like, the zombie outbreak started near Georgia or Macon, where Lee's group was. And then it's spread over to, or caught wind when... Uh, Rick Grimes's stuff started happening, I guess. I know absolutely nothing about the TV show or the comics, so I not really want to start discussing that, but basically that's what happened. Like, it was... She was originally meant to be this comic book character, but then it, uh, that character got, character got a different backstory, so they uh, just uh, sort of came out with a confirmation being like, oh, no, it's not the same person anymore. Even though, like, on the official website for the Season 1 game, it, like, did mention that she's supposed to be the same character from the comics, but then they just deleted all that info be like, uh, never mind. That's kind of funny. Wait, what were we discussing? Stats? Oh, yeah. Uh, did we shoot Lily or run away? Um, you and 51% of players told Violet to shoot Lily and got Lewis shot. I wasn't going to. I was going to tell them to run away, but in that specific situation... I didn't click my answer quick enough, and if you don't pick an answer in that situation, um, they notice the kids behind you, or behind her, and then, like, Lily just shoots you right then and there, and it's a game over and you have to reset. Because of that, because I saw Lily was willing to shoot Clementine so early on, like, that just showed me she was pure stinking evil and there would never be any reasoning with her throughout any of the game, I decided to shoot her then. So that was, that like accident influenced my decision. So at a last second effort, I wound up getting Lewis shot and not much happens, thankfully. It, he just sort of has like a arrow in his, an arrow stain or a mark in his uh, awesome jacket for the rest of the game. Why does it have to be Lewis who gets shot? Vile's the one who shot the arrow. I don't know. It's always Lewis. After he lost his friend, now he gets stabbed. Like a lot of stinking terrible things can happen to Lewis, but we'll get to that. Um, if you tell them to run, then they run and they don't get harmed. And then neither does Lily though. So, uh, just sort of has Lily change her opinion about you, I guess. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not Lewis gets hurt. And you know me trying to protect Lewis as much as possible. Sometimes, sometimes I succeed, but other times not so much. As for the third choice, you and 93% of players spared the walker honoring James's request. Uh, 6% of players kill the walker after James asked you not to. 
and then 1% of players let James throw the rock to distract the walker. That happens if you just say nothing. Um, it's just a matter of what uh, you want to do. If you want to like humor James with his beliefs and uh, grow closer to him and whatnot. If you don't though, then like that changes uh, his opinion about you. And he, like, of course he'll like you a bit less, but he'll still like try and help you out and try to convince you over time. Uh, kind of a minor choice though in the grand scheme of things. And then the big old romance one. Uh, who do you want to hang out with? Uh, me and 41% of players helped Lewis tune his piano. And then 59% of players uh, spend time stargazing with Violet. So this has like four different pathways. You could either just spend time with Lewis, spend time with Violet, or you could romance them as well. I don't have the percentages of how many people romanced them. Uh, do I have that? No, I do not. Um, so basically... Uh, you could lead the conversation with Lewis into a romance, and you could start a, a relationship with him. And same thing with Violet. Uh, you're just uh, watching the stars. It's actually kind of cool with Violet. Um, you when you're stargazing, you're like making constellations in the sky, and you're like, you actually get to draw them out with a cursor, and like you drag lines across the screen, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, if you start the relationship with uh Lewis, then you're bonded for life. And same thing with Violet. Even if um you even if you romance one of them and then have them get kidnapped uh at the end of the episode you could still be in a relationship with them by the end of the episode which is kind of a terrible thing to do even though like i was considering doing that like i because i was constantly trying to be like completely even with violet and lewis i wanted them to both like me equally and i was like between the gap of episode two and three i was kind of regretting uh romancing lewis and then also saving him I felt like I should have let him get kidnapped so that, like, we're bonded for life and, like, he's in this terrible situation, but we're going to get back together. And then, um, with Violet, I didn't spend time with her, but I did save her life, so she's okay with me. And, like, I just also felt terrible about that because, like, I asked her to stand up to Marlon and, and protect me and defend me and all that jazz. And then, also, she was one of the people who asked, who voted for us to stay, and Lewis wasn't. So, I really had no reason to start the romance with Lewis and to save Lewis, but I adore his character. He's a phenomenal stinking dude, and I love him. So, like, of course I'm going to save him, and I'm going to romance him. So, and after learning all the different branching paths, I 100% do not regret my decision. We'll get to that, but let me just say, oh my god, it was terrifying. So I know one of my main complaints about season three was the whole relationship aspect of it. I thought like it was kind of just forced a lot of the time and I really did not care about it because like people would make their decisions on whether or not to help a human being like not get killed based on whether or not they would uh, get to sleep with them at the end of the day. And I just thought that was really stinking obnoxious. But the relationships in this episode or in this game, it's really not all that forced. First off, you could choose whether or not to even do it. And, like, if you stay friends with them, it's fine. They're just friends, and they're okay with that. But if you, um, d do start the relationship, then just, like, an added bonus, you get to see a closer bond between the characters. So, it's really nice. And, like, just another example of how these kids are, like, a million times smarter than the adults will ever be in the apocalypse. And as for, like, what the official ship is for these characters, if you ship... Clem with Lewis, that's fine. If you ship Clem with Violet, that's also fine. If you don't want her with anyone, that's fine too. As long as you don't ship her with Gabe, because that is the dumbest stinking decision you could possibly ever make, because Gabe is the worst stinking character in the entire franchise. But anyway, on to the final decision of who do you save from getting kidnapped. You, uh, me and 44% of players rescued Lewis instead of Violet. Of course, like I said, it was just like... I already started the relationship with him. I like him more. Um, I just wanted to save him. So I regretted it for a while thinking that like I should have been evening it out. But considering what happens afterwards, I don't regret it. But we'll get to that. Uh, if you save Lewis, then like um, you have him for like the majority of episode three. And if you save Valo, then it's like vice versa. And we'll get into like all those differences uh, as we start to discuss episode three. Because like there's a lot of different stuff that could happen then. Then onto the character stats, Ruby actually has a main one this time since we spent more time with her. Um, Mitch unfortunately does not, even though we spent time with him. He dies at the end of the episode, so he isn't deserving of stats, I guess. Uh, but Ruby, uh, me and 89% of players left her feeling grateful. Uh, she will be grateful if you help her bury Miss Martin. 
but if you decide to burn her along with Mitch, then uh, she will be disgusted with you, and uh, 10% of players did that. Around 10% of players did that. Uh, as for Lewis, even though I romanced him and saved him, uh, me and 44% of players left him feeling guilt-ridden, which was very unfortunate for me to read. Uh, that happens if that just, that is unfortunately the only outcome you could have with him. If you save him, then he'll feel guilt-ridden because uh, he lost Violet. But if you don't save him, then his stat is just called kidnapped. And 52% uh, of players allowed him to get kidnapped, which is heartbreaking. Uh, as for Lily, me and 55% of players left her feeling unconvinced. Oh my God. Lily is just so stinking horrible. Um, So I wanted to know what would happen like if she would actually be nicer to you if uh, Lee was nicer to her. Like if he, um, you do every single good thing with him, like uh, helping her revive her dad, siding with her in fights... And also, uh, not leaving her on the side of the road. If Lee actually did that, would she not be so mean to Clementine? Or would she not be so mean to Lee? I looked it up, and Lily actually makes fun of Lee for, uh, for trusting her and, like, letting her back on the in the RV after she killed Carly. And called, calls him, like, an idiot and says he's, like, so easy to manipulate and all that jazz. And he was a fool. And it's absolutely disgusting and terrible. She is... A pure stinking evil human being and I despise her I was going back and forth on like who is the worst person in The Walking Dead Gabe is like the most stupid and annoying I despise him character but then like the most like despicable human being it's like a three-way tie between Lily Jane and David uh, probably not David though just because like I don't know he's still like detached and like I don't uh, I have a lot of problems with him but like Season 3 is just sort of like a blur to me, and like, I don't really care, honestly. Uh, but with Jane, I have a lot more problems with what she did and the, and the things she did. But Lily is just, like, so much more hateable. Like, my god. Especially since she has, like, terrible things that she does throughout two different games. That certainly helps in that regard. So you leave Lily feeling unconvinced if you... Uh, during the fight when she shows up to the school and if you either remain silent or tell her that we were family once then she'll be unconvinced and then around 30% of players left her feeling unsettled if you say see you in heck or the other word but we don't say that here in Midnight and Beyond Incorporated and then around 16% of players left her feeling unimpressed when you said get it over with like when she said she was going to kill us and we're like oh why don't you get it over with then she feels unimpressed Whatever, Lily, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just trying to murder you as soon as humanly possible. Uh, but actually, uh, about that, if you did shoot Lily in that scene, because that was actually uh, one of the options you could have shot her during that conversation. If you do that, then the uh, other characters that are with her just kill you, and it's game over, and you have to reset. Kind of unfortunate. As for AJ, you let me and 67% of players left him feeling repentant. That's basically based off the first conversation when he asks if killing Marlon was justified. If you say no, then he'll feel repentant and he'll try to atone. But then around 31% of players left him feeling justified if you told AJ he was justified. Simple as that. And then Violet, um, unfortunately I got her kidnapped. Me and 44% of players left her uh, kidnapped. Um, around... But if you do save her, then uh, the stat you get for her is vengeful. And around 52% of players got that stat. Um, she'll feel vengeful, trying to, like, uh, want to get revenge and save Lewis and all that jazz. So, uh, yeah, she's a lot more tough than Lewis, so it makes sense for her to have that title. Uh, as for Tennessee, he'll feel, me and 50% of players left him feeling despondent, whatever that word means. Um, that happens if you tell him not to listen to Lily when she's saying that Sophie and Minnie are still alive, or if you remain silent during that situation. Um, but if you tell Lily to shut up, then, or you take a shot at her during then, um, then 41% of players will have gotten the stat saying that he feels ashamed, I guess. Not really sure why that happens, but whatever. As for James, I um, mean, 36% of players left him feeling trusted, uh, which is kind of weird, actually. Oh, wait, no, so the, they're both positive, uh, trusted and appreciative. 
Uh, basically, if you tell him that you're from Georgia originally, then he will feel trusted in you because you told him where you live, I guess. But if you don't tell him that, then he'll just feel appreciated of you. And around 60% of players got that. Okay. Uh, Abel, he's always captured. whoop de doo And Mitch is always dead, unfortunately. Uh, Omar and Asim are always kidnapped. You always are stuck with Willy, which is unfortunate. But we always get Rosie, which is nice. It's a stinking miracle that that dog did not stink and die. I would have been so stinking heartbroken if that happened. But thankfully, it did not. And it is not possible. Um, episode 3 is a little bit different because, as you remember, all the characters, uh, ended off being missing in action, so there's no different character titles that you could have for the end of it, just different little bits of info on how they feel about you after your choices. Um, but I guess I could talk about what happens with Violet and Lewis specifically, uh, depending on which version, uh, what you did, like whether or not you romance them and whether or not you, uh, save them. Um, with Lewis, if you remember in episode three, we had a date with him, um, that date won't happen if you didn't romance him, obviously. You could also just say no to the day if you just say it's bad time. And he'll be like, okay, I could take a hint. And he'll just uh, have a conversation with you in the room. And then with Violet, it's sort of the same thing. You just have a conversation with her if you're a friend with her. If you, um, Violet will always give you a little button that, or a pin that you could put on your jacket. If you're just friends with her, she'll give you a pin with a clementine on it, like an actual fruit, which is kind of funny. And then if you romance her, she gives you a pin with a bunch of stars on it, kind of like uh, as a reference to when you fell in love. And you can also dance with her in your room just because, like, they've never been to a dance before. So they just dance with each other in the room, which is kind of funny. Well, it was supposed to be romantic, but it was just, uh, I don't know. They're both kind of, they're both cute and dorky because, like, uh, with Lewis, we had a date with, like, pretzels and, like, we toasted with them. It was really funny. So yeah, that's what happens if you do that, but as for the actual stats of episode 3, um, me and 93% of players Mercy killed Abel. I sort of tortured him a little bit, but I didn't like burn him, and I didn't sick Rosie on him. I just slammed his de head into the desk a couple times, it wasn't too terrible. Uh, but of course, AJ was like, oh, torture is good, must kill all humans. Uh, I don't see, whatever. Even though I Mercy killed him in the end. Uh, something kind of interesting, though, about Abel is that, um, when he was asking us to kill him, um, if you, like, prolong that conversation longer, saying that, like, uh, you weren't gonna do it, then he would get more and more scared, and he would actually give you extra information on, uh, where their group is from, that's from, like, a place called Rockingham, and apparently that is a reference to the TV show, um, you heard, um, uh, Minerva say it. Um, you heard Minerva say it when, uh, we first saw her out in the woods, it was, they just, she just called out to Lily and she was like, Rockingham, it was like their code word. Um, but it is actually the name of their, their location or something like that. Uh, so let me just look this up. The Delta are a group of raiders who were first encountered in Telltale Games Walking Dead Season 4. Um... They're currently fighting against another community and involved in a huge war spanning from Richmond to the East Coast, so... The Delta was the one was, was like were part of that big war that was happening in Richmond and possibly at McCarroll Ranch. So uh, even before we knew Lily was alive, she was causing trouble for us. And she's sort of the reason why we couldn't go back to Javier. Okay, it's not a reference to the TV show, but um, just you could actually get even more information out of Abel. He's holding like, he has like a secret map to um their hideout location um he keeps it like in his shoe and he'll only tell you about it if you uh don't immediately accept his request right away when he says asks you to kill him and not let him turn you just like uh worry him a little bit more and then he'll freak out and he'll give you that information and then you get the final decision whether or not you want to kill him or make him turn so uh that was kind of cool and i saw that I was like oh i missed that i missed out on that it doesn't amount to anything though it's just like kind of a cool little extra uh, but yeah, for 93% of players killing Abel, I don't regret that decision. Uh, I was just fine with killing him, and, like, I got my information, and I didn't want to torture him. Something kind of weird, though, is, if you notice, like, right at, um, during the end of the, end of episode 4, when we're walking back, and the song Take Us Back starts playing, um, you saw that Abel was tied to a tree, and with a sign that, like, is a don't mess with us. 
Um, if you let Abel turn, then they tie up the zombie Abel there, but they didn't kill him? So presumably, like, Omar or Sim or somebody, like, they took the zombie Abel out of the basement and dragged him all the way outside to the front yard and tied him to a tree without getting bit? Somehow? Like, maybe they put a bag over his head first, like with it, like with Randall in Michonne, but that was just really stinging weird. Like, I saw that in, like, an alternate thing, and, like, I assumed that the dead walker body would just be there instead of the dead human body, but no, the walker is still alive and struggling there if you don't, uh, if you let him turn, which I thought was really weird. 7% of players uh, let him turn. Basically, you just uh, kind of increasing AJ's uh, idea of the of torturing people and having it being good and the just thing to do, I guess. Um, you do get to see him turn like right then and there, though, which is kind of cool. It's just uh, always kind of interesting when you get to see that process happen in real time. But whatever. Uh, On to the next stat. Again, just another one that uh, changes your relationship with James. You and 94% of players respected James's beliefs and killed no walkers. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to put in the time to do it because it is kind of difficult and I had to reset a couple times. But I was just fine with resetting and uh, taking the challenge. And if I succeeded, then I'd just grow closer to him. So I thought that was good. Uh, 3% of players only killed some of the walkers in James's camp. I assume in that one, like, he just, like, appreciates the effort. But, like, he's upset with you that you killed some of them. And then 3% of them, 3% of players ignored James's wishes and killed all of the walkers in the camp. And then he gets mad at you. He's like, you didn't even try to... Uh, spare any of them. You're playing too much Undertale, James. This ain't Undertale, it's The Walking Dead. In this world, it literally is kill or be killed. Uh, actually, I was looking back on uh, the other discussing, discussing Choices videos, and I said something that was actually true uh, back then, but it uh, is a bit different this time around, in which I said, um, in a lot of my choices on whether or not I want to kill people, um, I noticed that in The Walking Dead, you never get in trouble for not killing someone. That is a bit different this time around because we actually uh, would have gotten in trouble for not killing uh, Lily at the end of this episode, which we'll get to. But um, I just noticed that throughout the previous games, you never got in trouble for not killing someone. And when playing these uh, choice-heavy games and whatnot, I often tend, of course, I, I like to play the pacifist and I like to not kill people because, not just because that's, uh, I want to play like the hero or the good guy or whatever, but also because I want to experience as much of the game as possible. So, like, for a Heavy Rain or Detroit Become Human, even if I don't like certain characters, I'm probably not going to kill them just because I want to experience as much of the game as possible, and I can't do that if certain characters are dead. So that's sort of my reasoning for how I go about how I go about playing these games. Uh, on to the next choice, uh, another kind of useless one. Uh, you and 66% of players named the bomb Mitch's Masterpiece. It just changes the flavor text when you put the bomb into the... Uh, boiler, it's very minor. Uh, 10% of players named the bomb Ruby's Revenge. If you do that, Ruby's all like, heck yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you and 17% of players named the bomb Willie Jr., which just sounds stinking hilarious. Uh, Willie's like, oh, I used to hate my name, but now I like it because of this. And then 4% of players had a bomb named AJ. I got really confused what that meant. Basically, if Clem just stays silent, then AJ will chime in. He'll be like, I have an idea for a name. We'll just name it AJ. And he's like, what the fruit? And they just go with it, so that's what that means. Uh, the next choice, uh, you and 78% of players allowed AJ to attack Dorian, stopping her from cutting off your friend's finger. Um, if you do that, then he bites her stinking ear off. My stinking god, that was terrifying to watch, but it's actually the better choice. Uh, AJ didn't get brutally maimed for doing that, and we saved our friend's finger. Uh, depending on whether or not you saved Violet or Lewis, if you saved Violet, then it would be... Uh, Lewis in the situation. Wait, no. If you saved Violet originally, then like it would be Violet in the situation. Whoever you came with, basically. So it was Lewis in the situation for us because we saved him. If you do that, then he'll be on the chopping block. If we save Violet, then it would be her. And if you had said no, then da da da. Of course, their finger gets chopped off. It doesn't really matter much, or doesn't get brought up much. Uh, in episode 4, when you meet up with them in the woods, again, it'll be whoever you saved initially, so we saved Lewis, so we found him in the woods. If his finger was missing, then he, uh, then, like, him and Clem will just talk about, uh, like, how's your finger, uh, he's like, it hurts, but, like, he's, he'll gonna get used to it or whatever. He doesn't mention anything about the piano, which I was expecting for Lewis specifically, like, how he wouldn't be able to play piano anymore, but, um, 
If you remember, Clementine could also be missing a finger because she gets a different scar on her body depending on uh, how you wrapped up episode or season two. If you had her um, go with Kenny like I did, then she had the scar on her forehead for the entirety of seasons three and four. But um, if you had her go alone at the end of season two, then she loses one of her rain fingers because it got slammed into a car door. Um, if you have that rain finger missing, then uh, Violet and Luce will talk about it during their date segment. But then also, uh, you could bond over it uh, at that moment as well in episode four when uh, the, like they both have fingers missing then. Um, if you're with Lewis and you're trying to tell him that like it, you get used to it or, or whatever, um, he makes a joke saying, like, I would ask you to pinky promise, but uh, yeah, because he lost his pinky finger. And then with Violet, then she just lifts up her middle finger and she's like, thankfully I can still do this. So that's kind of funny. It doesn't really amount to much though, so I'm glad that I went ahead and did that as well. Uh, But yeah, I guess this would be a good time to talk about what happens if you did not, uh, if you, what happens when you don't save a certain character. Um, Because we let Violet get kidnapped, uh, she ended up despising us and like uh, made a complete 180 on us. She said that, like, we should have saved her, we could have saved her, we, like, abandoned her and everything like that. No matter how you treat Violet throughout the game, that happens. Even if you romance her, she'll still hate you. And it's really stinking and unfortunate. Like, I praise this game so much for not doing that. How, like, when people mess up or when people are mad, they forgive each other and they move on from it. Or they understand that, like, it was a terrible situation and whatnot. They are understanding. But in this one situation, it just did not happen. And I was just so upset about that. And I assumed that would be the exact same thing for Lewis. If, like, we didn't save him, um, then he would just be in that cell and he would just think about how Clem got his best friend killed and now he just got him kidnapped and everything like that. And uh, he wanted her to leave initially, but it just didn't happen. I was expecting to just be the same thing. Lewis would hate us and Violet would like us if uh, we got him kidnapped. Not in the slightest. I can't even talk about this without, like, getting chills. Like, I get... I was incredibly overwhelmed when I saw this for the first time. Um, I recommend playing the game for yourself to see this, or uh, just look up the videos on YouTube. But, of course, I always recommend you play the game for yourself, um, even before watching my own Let's Play of it. I don't even know how to talk about this. Like, I'm sorry if I get emotional right now, but, like, I just... I love Lewis so stinking much, and, like, when I found out... When I saw this thing happen, it... It completely broke me when I thought I was finally done crying for the for the night. Oh my god. If you do not save Lewis, if he gets kidnapped instead of Violet, you show up in the jail cell and uh, once you wake up after getting knocked unconscious by Minnie, uh, Lewis is incredibly happy and grateful to see you. He hugs you immediately and there is no angry confrontation at all. So that's that's nice, that's good. But then he tries to start talking to you and he can't get any words out and you also notice that his face is covered in blood. A sim mentions that Lewis would not stop back talking to Lily and as a result of that she cut out his tongue. I was heartbroken and I got so stinking cold when I saw that my jaw just dropped and I was like are you kidding me that actually happens Lewis will lose his ton and not speak for the rest of the game if you didn't save him it's insane when even when you when you think about it because Violet forgives us in the end in episode four if we got her kidnapped in episode three yeah she loses her eyesight but like she gets it back apparently in the end and she, she her face gets a bit messed up but like she's still friends with us and it works out okay but with lewis my god like that's such a huge drastic change it's not as black and white as just violet will hate you here or lewis will hate you here no it's completely 100 percent different lewis is with you but and like if you let him get kidnapped there, then, like, he can't die for the rest of the game because, like, he'll always be, like, off in the background, kind of like with Violet for our, uh, for my playthrough. But right then and there, like, even if he's alive for the rest of the game, he is completely changed. He had his tongue cut out. 
So because of that, he becomes incredibly frail and fragile and traumatized. That's the note you get at the end of the episode. It says Lewis is traumatized after what happened to him after Lily cut his tongue out. And when I read that, I was so sad because he really is gone. Like, you see him try to smile throughout, like, uh, the episodes or um, in episodes three and four. But, like, every time he does it, he just, like, his eyebrows are uh, drooped down. Like, he can only hold the smile for, like, a second before going back into a frown. He's gone. He is just gone. And it made me so sad, even though he was still alive. He was not the same person. That person is completely gone. And I was just miserable. I'm sorry I keep on going on and on about this, but, like, that's just an example of how much I love this character. I was stinking miserable and, like... All my concerns are being like, oh, I gotta even out my friendships between Lewis and Violet. That completely disappeared as soon as I saw that. I was so grateful that I saved him. And, like, I actually got, like, a bunch of comments from a bunch of uh, people with Lewis icons, like, Lewis YouTube icons when uh, that episode went up. They were like, you made the right choice with Lewis, believe me. And, like, they didn't spoil it for me as well, which was really nice. Like, they were just like, you made the right choice, just trust me. You, uh, I'm glad you saved Lewis. <laughs> and I got, like, a bunch of other subscribers with, like, Lewis icons and whatnot oh my god I, I just get hung up on this and I keep thinking about it it's horrible how could that happen it's insane and like whenever you mention Lily like say when Clem says that you'll get revenge for him or you'll stop Lily and make her pay as soon as you mention Lily he starts shaking violently he's like no 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 he doesn't want you to go after her because he's terrified of her when she comes into the cell, he freaks out again because she stinking traumatized him. And, like, he gets set off by, like, even the smallest thing when the boat starts shaking or anything like that. He starts shaking. He gets so scared. And, like, just looking at his face, it was horrible. It was so stinking horrible. Alright, I'm gonna move on from this, but, like, oh my god, I am so grateful that I saved him. It was absolutely terrible when I saw that. Oh my god, I would have cried so stinking hard if that happened in my playthrough. I'm so glad that I didn't let him get kidnapped. Oh my god. What are we talking about? Chopping off a finger? I don't know. Whatever. I saved Lewis's finger, I saved his ton, I saved everything. Oh my god, I... I don't even know what to say. But, uh, yeah, the final decision for episode 3. 42% of players had AJ kill Lily. 58% of players told him not to kill Lily. Um, I was very worried about what that would lead to in the final episode. I really didn't know what would happen, what that decision would lead AJ to do in the final episode. But it only really leads to that conversation in the cave when you're with James, how AJ says that like he liked killing Lily and he said it felt good. And you gotta like try and talk him down, like, get him to change his mind. That's really all it ever leads to. He doesn't do any insane, crazy decision uh, based on whether or not he killed Lily. He just says a bunch of really scary things. And then, of course, James goes absolutely psycho, and he hates you for it, which is unfortunate. Um, but the thing with James, actually, um, that thing in episode 4 could end a bit differently. Um, when I was confused about whether or not how I didn't get his mask. Um, well, first off, if you don't have AJ kill Lily, then James walks over to AJ and, like, takes the gun from him, and he's all happy. He's like, oh, you didn't do it. Good job, AJ. I'm so proud of you. And, of course, surprising absolutely no one, James gets stabbed in the back, literally and figuratively, by Lily. She murders him after she was spared, and then the bomb goes off, and everyone disappears. That is infuriating. And before you ask, no, you cannot kill Lily in episode 4 if you did not kill her in episode 3. Uh, she just escapes on a boat, and then, like, uh, you could shoot at her while on the boat, but, like, you have three opportunities to shoot her, and, like, all three times you miss. The only way you could kill her is if it's with AJ, which stinks, but... Oh my god, if it keeps James alive, then that's cool, and, like, I wish I could show him that, so, like, he wouldn't be so livid with me, and, like, he he went psycho. He was, like, going all season three on us, like, characters acting absolutely obnoxious. So that was really unfortunate, because I liked that character so much. He was, like, my second favorite character, besides Clem, obviously, doesn't count, but, like, Lewis was first, and then James was second, and I 
really hate how he ended up that he couldn't like resolve things with him but um basically in that final conversation with him when uh clem says you can't force your ideals on other people um he'll just get mad but like he'll still understand where you're coming from so when you leave the cave he'll uh defend you from the walkers that are coming over but if you say anything else to him he'll get absolutely furious with you and he'll storm off and he'll say he'll find his own way out and he leaves you to face the walkers on your own you don't have to fight any of them you just have to leave with them following behind and if you do that then you get to take james's mask because like aj picks it up and he's like he left his max his mask behind but also if james died in episode three then at the beginning of episode four when you're escaping the boat aj picks up the mask be like oh james sad pandas oh i really i don't even know i can't say i hope anything because the the franchise is over i can't hope that i'll see him again i can't hope that we can make amends because it is over. I ended it as good as I possibly could have with him. It's either abandonment, uh, one final goodbye, uh, parting ways like somewhat on good terms, or him dead. So he better appreciate the fact that I at least saved his stinking life, but I'll never know about that because we're never going to see him again. Lily is pure stinking evil, though I despise her. My god. Um, if you, uh, don't have AJ kill, uh, Lily and then James gets killed for it, uh, the fight in the cave, it's like, AJ just gets mad at Clem for, um, she, like, he feels bad about killing, about having James be killed and, like, she, he sort of blames Clem for it as well. And then also there's a James Walker in the group that follows you into the cave and he just sort of stands in the front of it, so that's kind of sad to see, but... Yeah, thankfully we didn't have to see that. I was, oh my god, Lily is piercing and evil. I hate her so singing much. Uh, but yeah, for the other choices, does he even say anything? Oh no, like I said, it's either missing in action or dead. Or for Abel, it's dead or turned. Um, 89% of players, yeah, we already saw that, so it's fine. So yeah, for all the character stats, it's either missing in action or dead, so... You just get the little flavor text, and unfortunately I don't have all the different uh, texts that could pop up on here. But whatever, that is episode three. Long story short, please save Lewis. My god, I cannot stress that enough. Save stinking Lewis in episode two. Violet will be fine. Violet will forgive you. Just, god, save Lewis, please. Don't let him go through that, because it is heartbreaking to see, him, to see him like that. He never smiles again. He never speaks again. It's horrible. Like, he's a broken person. He's a broken human being, a broken child, if you let that happen. So please, do not let him get hurt. I can't stress that enough. And now, for the final episode, episode four, Take Us Back. Uh, I guess the only thing I should mention before we go over the stats is that um, as for the Disco Broccoli uh, Easter egg that we sort of discovered at the end of the uh, at the end of the LP, um, I was super confused about it because like it just it didn't make a whole lot of sense and it wasn't all that funny. I was like the broccoli didn't come to life. It didn't like break the fourth wall or anything. I didn't really understand it. Um, apparently that speech that AJ gives where like he's all like I've seen things that you wouldn't believe and all that jazz. Um, it's a reference to Blade Runner, and, like, just the words are slightly changed to make sense in the Walking Dead universe, where, like, he talks about our characters instead of Blade Runner characters. So, yeah, he just, like, has a monologue from Blade Runner, which is funny, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, as for the final choices, um, you and 59% of players let AJ make his own decisions, and then 41% of players told AJ he wasn't ready to make his own decisions. That right there determines whether or not 10 lewis or violet live or die so you cannot have all three of them it's impossible to have all three of them uh live for the end and of course it's also impossible to have them all die you'll always be with two of them um if you're uh, for our situation i had um since i saved lewis in episode two he was the one who came with us during episode four, if you would say Violet, it would have been her, so you would have to choose between Ten and Violet instead of uh, Ten and Lewis. But it's not even your choice. You have no idea what this implies or what's going to happen. Like, I was incredibly fortunate because I guarantee you right now, like, I would have broken 
like the cardinal rule of playing these games blind and I would have hashtag reset so stinking hard if um if Lewis wound up dying in a situation that was completely out of my control and like was not even expected like that would be infuriating like I do think this is a stupid decision it's kind of unfortunate like any of my problems I have with this game are in season or in episode four the final episode like this first decision yeah, I'm sad 10's dead, but, like, I'd be a million times more miserable and furious if Lewis died and I had zero say in the matter. Because, like, after you say that thing, it says that AJ looks seeks your approval above all else. So, like, what was keeping us from just um, being on the floor and telling AJ what to do in that situation if he's seeking our approval? It should have been, like, whether or not he would listen to us. Which would have still been infuriating if he got Lewis killed from not listening to us. But, um, it was, I don't know, I don't like this first choice. I don't really support it. Um, being such a drastic, immense choice that you really don't know what to expect. You, like, just tell him to make the hard calls or say he isn't ready yet. And, like, you have no idea what's going to happen. So, if you tell him he's ready to make his own decisions, he will kill Ten. Uh, so that Violet or Lewis will stop. Um, trying to get him to uh, jump over the bridge and then you say Violet slash Lewis but then 10 always dies in that situation there is no way to have him shoot Minerva and save them both which is unfortunate if you tell AJ he isn't ready to make his own decisions he will not be able to shoot 10 because he uh, doesn't feel like uh, that he can make that call because of what you said to him so he instead just yells at the other person to throw 10 over and they do it right away. Ten survives, but then Violet slash Lewis will get killed. And it is really stinking horrible. Uh, AJ slaps Ten in the face be like, yeah, she, they died because of you, dummy, butthead. So, that's really bad, and I hate it. And after you, like, hop over the bridge, if Ten survives uh, in that situation, then um, apparently they get separated. We'll, we'll get to that in the final uh, choice, because we do get back to that in a second. But, yeah, it's really crummy. It's such a weird, weird stat that, like, you have no idea what that's going to lead to. I'm really not a fan of this stat, and I just lucked out so stinking hard. Because, like, I'm not even going to mince words. Like, I would have broken the rules and just reset so stinking quickly if that happened. Ay. And then the obligatory pointless stat that every episode seems to have. Uh, you and 15% of players let Lewis decide on the last flourish of his imaginary house, which he said would be a piano. 38% uh, of players decide to add a skylight to Lewis's imaginary house, which is nice because um, it would have led to... Uh, that's basically what he said he wanted in his own house. He wanted a skylight if he got straight A's. 31% of players decide to add a tree house to Lewis's imaginary house. Uh, if you say that, then he's just like, oh yeah, a tree house, that's awesome. And then 15% of players decide to add a statue of yourself to Lewis's imaginary house. If you do that, then Lewis is like, uh, I'll make sure that the pigeons don't poop on it or anything like that. Which is kind of funny. Um, if you had Lewis get killed in your playthrough, then his grave in at the school will have a picture on it that shows Clem and Lewis uh, in front of their imaginary house. And it'll be colored whatever color you decided on. So for me, it would have been purple. But yeah, unfortunately, I wouldn't have all 914 floors drawn in it, but it's the thought that it counts, I suppose. Especially since Ten's the one responsible for killing him. Um, for Violet, though, the conversation is a bit different, where she says that she likes to rename Erickson just because uh, none of them actually like that guy. So um, she's considering like changing the name. Um, you could change it to. Uh, what are the choices? Let me see real quick. Um, around 55% of players told Violet to rename the school herself. If you do that, sh then she'll say she wants to name it Texas. Like, just Texas. Comes all like, you can't name it Texas. Texas already exists. And then she's like, alright, fine. Uh, Texas 2. And that's the name. You settle on, you're gonna rename Erickson Texas 2. Which is funny, I guess. 18% um, of players renamed the school Castle Violet. And Violet's all like, you can't do that. That sounds corny and dorky and stuff. But you go ahead with it anyway. 18% um, of players renamed the school Happy Sunshine Land. She says, oh my god, I want to barf on it. 
hear that name that's so stupid and then Clem's like come on you like it you know you like it and she's like fine we'll call it happy sunshine land and then nine percent of players rename the school rotting uh poop hole except not actually the word poop um just because like the dirty wordy choice hey you guys you didn't choose the vulgar answer i'm proud of you and then uh violet's like oh that sounds dirty i like dirty and then basically if violet dies then um she'll have a picture of her and Clem in front of Erickson, but with the name that they decided on written on the top instead, so it could say Texas 2 or Castle Isle or whatever. And uh, that's sort of how that stat gets impacted. But yeah, thankfully we didn't end up losing Violet or Lewis, and especially thankfully for me, I did not end up losing his stinking ton. Um, if you had saved Violet originally and like she never got kidnapped, uh, she would have her eyesight, and, uh, because she was never near the bomb. Oh, yeah, she also mentioned that, um, Lewis, how he shot Dorian, uh, during that fight when he broke out. Um, Dorian only shows up when Lewis never got kidnapped. I don't really know why that is, but, um, if you didn't do that, then Violet will, uh, help you with breaking out and all that stuff, and then Minerva's gonna be fighting you, and she'll be on top of you, trying to kill you. Uh, Violet will take the crossbow and then shoot Minerva in the uh, shoulder and then she's like I can't just leave her here just go go and I'll follow you as soon as uh, we get out of here or whatever so uh, Dorian just never shows up if Violet's the one helping you which is weird and then like if you had Lewis with you then he kills Dorian uh, Dorian gets killed in episode four among like all the other walkers if you uh, if she didn't get killed in episode three just a minor little detail and, of course, uh, we know what happens with Minnie in episode 4, which is crazy. And now for the heartbreaker. Oh, boy. Did you ask AJ to kill you? You and 57% of players asked AJ to kill you rather than let you become a walker. And then the other 43% asked AJ to leave you and let you become a walker. Oh, boy. Like... Look, we can look on on it. We can look back on it now, all happy and stuff, because no matter what you decide, um, Clementine always survives. And yeah, I guess I should mention that Clem will always live. Hooray! Oh, so it's always a happy ending. But my God, I genuinely did not know. Like, I knew I had to pick kill her, because like that's what I did with Lee, and that's like sort of like a symbolic thing to do. But. Oh my god, like, I was really struggling to do that, as you all know if you saw the episode, because I'm bawling my stinking eyes out, and, like, I did not want to do it. I wanted to just say leave her, because I didn't want to see that, or, like, I know they wouldn't show it, but, like, just the idea of axing her. Oh my god. I was so stinking miserable, and, like, I still don't like the the fact that we've had so many amputated characters throughout this series we had reggie we have abel and now we have clem and they all survived after their bites but lee doesn't like i was that was a thing i was theorizing on that like um lee would get brought back at the last second in season four like either um if you had left him to be reanimated and you never shot him or if you did shoot him then like uh she shot the wall and like we never saw it and then she just ran away and we never told anyone about it. I thought that's what was going to happen. And, like, right at the end when they say they are going to go investigate a certain group that's outside their safe zone, I thought that was going to be Lee. I seriously was holding out on that till the last thing in second because, like, they're all in the same situation where, like, they get bit and, like, they amputate them and they're fine. With Lee, it is... Sort of the same, except, like, I guess too much time had passed, so it was too late. We could have amputated his arm. And if you did... I guess that would make sense for the people who didn't amputate it, who didn't cut off his arm. Then they would lose Lee no matter what, because they never tried to stop the stop him from getting infected. So I could definitely imagine people getting furious because of that. Like, if they did bring back Lee, but only for, like, 50% of the players, that would make people really stinking angry. But, man, I wish he came back. I, I wish we could have everything, but I know that's not how this world works. And I should just be over-the-top grateful that Clem survives no matter what. 
oh my god, they they ended this so perfectly. I'm so happy with how this game turned out and everything. Like it could have gone in so many different directions, and like she could have died, which would have been horrible. Or if she just lived to the end of it, then like that doesn't really end the series. It doesn't end her story. If like stuff could still continue, but the way they did it with this, like it truly is the end of her story because she can't be the leader anymore. Uh, she could all, all she could really do is talk. She can't uh, run around and fight and kick butt anymore. And that'll be up to AJ to cover her and make the hard choices like she trusted him to do. So if you tell AJ to kill you, then he'll be like, no. And then you see him swing the axe, making you think that he killed her. But in reality, he just cut uh, her leg off. If you tell her, if you tell him to leave you, then he says no still. And then like he throws the axe up and like uh, throws it down. If I had gotten that, then, like, I feel like I would have been tipped off that, like, um, just the way he says no, and then, like, he throws the axe down, like, it makes it see it makes it seem like he's going to try and amputate the leg a lot more, because, like, you weren't expecting him to do that, but, like, it could also just sort of be interpreted of him, because, like, the recap thing that pops up, it starts off with him being, like, uh, how he's been thinking on his own lately, and he doesn't think Clem is always right. So maybe, like, that choice could have been influenced, and also similar to how the first choice ended up, where you don't really get a say in the matter. Um, you don't expect what is going to happen, what age is going to do. So maybe that could get interpreted as, like, he'll just always do the opposite of whatever you say in that situation. Maybe he w- there's a possibility where he could leave you uh, when you ask him to kill you, but uh, no, that never happens. He'll always amputate the leg. Clem will always survive. And I am super stinking grateful for that. It was really stinking emotional and heartbreaking, but it all turned out okay in the end. Uh, This decision, there's like two different stats for this slot. It's depending on whether or not you uh, killed 10 at the beginning of this episode. Um, For me, I did get him killed, so the stat was you and 29% of players spared 10 after he became a walker. And then the other 71% of players shot 10 after he became a walker. Um, I guess shooting him as a walker just to put him out of his misery is the better option, but, like, I don't know, just, like, a one last homage to James, I guess, just not killing him. And, like, the fact that, like, 10 sort of had that mindset, too, where, like, there's more to walkers or there's more to life after dying or something like that. Um, I just sort of went with it just because I thought it was, like, a bit more what he would have done in that situation, I guess. So, I went ahead and did that. If you shoot him, then you just shoot him, and, like, no one ever notices or brings him up or anything like that. It's just a decision you can make. I think Rosie just whimpers about it, of course, because she's all sad and everything, but she whimpers either way if you just by seeing the zombie, so... Uh, it's sad no matter what, basically. If you didn't save 10, however, um, you know the part where, after they get, cro- get across the bridge, um, and then Lewis jumped over the fence... Um, if you have 10 jump over the fence there, then, like, uh, it's implied that, like, he never returned to the school, because he meets up with AJ out in the field, and, like, AJ's like, I, no, we all thought you were dead, and, like, because apparently he never made it back to the school, so, like, this is their first time seeing each other after, uh, they separated, and in that situation, Tennessee actually has Clementine's hat instead of seeing it flow down the river, so he says he found it, uh, in the river, and he thought, uh, AJ would want it, and then AJ just says... Uh, thanks for it, and then Ten's like, you should wear it, and AJ's like, uh, no, my hair is too big, which is kind of funny. But thankfully, we always get Clem's hat back. I was so worried that it was a collectible that would be missable, and, like, I was really not gonna be happy if we ended the game without her hat. But, um, in that situation, Ten says that, like, he, uh, went back and saw Minnie's body after she got eaten and all that jazz, and, like, as well as Violet or Lewis, depending on who was there. And he says after seeing that, he came to the realization that, like, the way he was thinking up to this point was all childish and stupid. Like, there's absolutely nothing after walkers, after uh, death. Um, The only sort of life you have is when you're living and everything like that. And then he asks AJ if uh, he could train him to be more like him. Uh, You could either say yes or no. If you say yes, then, like... Uh, once you get back to the school, they have a little training session where he teaches Ten how to shoot. But if you say no, you say that, like, um, I think you say something along the lines of, like, it 
we need more people like Ten or like um, we want him to continue drawing and be innocent and stuff like that. We like him just how he is or whatever. And then back at the school, you have a little uh, drawing a uh, play date with him. So uh, basically just however you want him to be. If you weren't a fan of how Ten was... When you really look back on it, Ten did cause a lot of problems. How like he, uh, he was sort of responsible for the kidnappings because he popped out when everyone was supposed to be hiding, and then when he was, he had Lily at gunpoint. He wasn't willing to shoot her, so uh, we had to leave that to AJ, and that could either result in James dying or in uh, AJ going psycho. So that's kind of unfortunate, but yeah, those are the different options for that specific stat. And is that the last one? Uh, yes, it is. As for the character stats, because we actually have them this time around, uh, for James, we could have him feeling conflicted, which is what I did. Me and 43% of players left him feeling conflicted. Uh, that's the stat that's going... That's what he's going to be if you tell him that he can't force his beliefs on other people. Um, around... Oh, he doesn't show the percentages. Like, I guess, like, just because the game is a bit too new at the time of me recording this, so the wiki hasn't updated on what percentages got these other stats. Um, but the other ones that you could have, um, you could leave him feeling disgusted if you say that the way he thinks is dangerous, and then you could leave him feeling infuriated if you say it's a childish philosophy. It's kind of weird if you say that one, because, like, I don't know, the way that Clem goes off, it's like, it gets really sarcastic and, like, I don't know, I just don't like the writing in that segment, so um, I'm fine with the decision I chose, especially since it resulted in, in him not being furious and leaving us. But, uh, yeah, he could either be conflicted, disgusted, or infuriated. I wish there was a better ending for him, but there sadly isn't. I guess you had to have some sort of consequence. If they weren't going to like drastically change AJ, AJ based on your decision, they just had to change whether or not James would like you, I guess. <laughs> Uh, this one's really interesting. Me and 100% of players left Violet feeling shaken. This wasn't a... Well, I guess it, even if it was a glitch, it was a widespread one. Because, like, I looked up other videos and, like, I saw someone who got the loved ending for Violet. And it said you and 0% of players uh, left Violet feeling loved. And, like, was she re were they really the only ones? Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. But, like, I just recently saw someone finish the game today as of recording this. And, um... The stats were a bit different, so maybe I just at that point of recording, it really was 100% of players leaving her feeling shaken. Uh, she will feel shaken if you saved her and suffer the children, so that's just sort of your... Wait, I didn't save her and suffer the children, though. Oh, no, that, I, that's the Lewis stat, excuse me, uh, for Violet shaken, so they, they both have sort of the same stats. Um, Violet will feel shaken if you save Lewis and suffer the children. Um, if you romanced her and I guess uh, if you romanced her and I assume save her as well, then you leave her feeling loved. How wonderful. And then you could also leave her feeling vulnerable if you rejected her and suffer the children. So like if you spent time with her and, uh, saved her, but you didn't romance her, then she'll just feel vulnerable, which is a weird way of putting it, I guess. Uh, as for Lily, she is dead in my playthrough, and I'm completely okay with that, especially considering you can't kill her in uh, in episode 4 if you didn't do it in episode 3. Um, like I said, she just escapes on a raft and like abandons all of her people as well, which is really crummy. If you do that, that'd be horrible if Clem died at the end, but Lily didn't. That'd be absolutely insane. Um, so I left her dead. Um... But you could also leave her feeling shamed if you try shooting at her multiple times. Then uh, she'll feel shamed and stuff. And she's also just like infuriated with you. She'll also feel shamed if you say she's pathetic for abandoning her people. Or as well as saying that you'll kill her if you ever see her again. And then you could also leave her feeling regretful if you tell her good luck out there. Or if you stay silent in your final words with her. So, yeah, she definitely isn't happy with leaving, but it just happens, I guess. In the end, though, in the grand scheme of things, I'm okay with her being dead in episode 3. And that makes Clementine the only survivor in the original group. She is the only one left because everyone else 
we know where they wound up. They're not missing. Krista doesn't really count as the original group. And everyone else is just gone, except for Clem. She'll be the ultimate survivor until the end of time. Hopefully. Uh, Tennessee, he's dead in our playthrough, unfortunately. Uh, but if he survived, you could leave him feeling either repentant, if AJ promises to teach him how to be more like him, or he'll feel valued if AJ doesn't promise to teach him, if he says that Ten is good just as he is and we need him to teach us things, basically. So that's sort of nice, I guess. You could have a happy ending with him. And then my boy Lewis, me and 8% of players left him feeling loved. How dare you, sick, sick people. Like, how many people, like, got Lewis kidnapped and lost his ton and everything like that? It's absolutely horrible. Like, I I can't even think about that without getting so sick and sad and scared and everything. But yeah, me and the 8% were the best players ever. I wish I knew those exact players just so I could give them all high fives. But yeah, me and 8% of players left him feeling loved. That happens if you romance him. Um, you could also leave him feeling shaken if you saved Violet. Then yeah, that gets to find us shaken, him being traumatized for life. Um, you could also leave him feeling humbled if you uh, saved him but you didn't romance him. So instead of feeling vulnerable, he feels humbled, which is weird. But it's better than ending up dead. He could have died if you... Didn't trust AJ to make the hard calls, which would have been horrible. As for all the little mini stats at the end of what Clem taught me, uh, I assume there's like a million of them and they're all just like alterations of recapping what we taught him throughout the game. It's, I don't have a list of all the different outcomes that you could have. I assume it's just like the your Clementine thing at the end of season three, how your Clementine wound up. And... There's just a million different outcomes on how it could have went down, so I'm uh, not really going to go through all of them. I just sort of went through all the stats and all the character stats, and we are pretty much good to go now. And I somehow managed to top the Season 3 episode after all. Mission accomplished. Oh, boy. But yeah, we are officially done with The Walking Dead Season 4, the final season, and with Walking Dead as a whole. I don't really know what else I could say that has been said already. I'm just very grateful that I got to play this game and that it was so stinking good. Like, at the end of Season 3, I really didn't enjoy the game and I was really just hoping for this franchise to end already because it was just getting run into the ground, I felt like. But with Season 4, like, as soon as it was called the final season, I got all scared and nervous. I was like, oh my god, I don't want it to end and, like, I don't know how it's going to end up. And I could not have asked for a better game to end this franchise with because it was really perfect. It was amazing. I loved this group of characters. I loved um, the story and like all the twists and everything. It was intense and scary and also incredibly lighthearted and hilarious and very happy and everything. It was phenomenal. I absolutely adored it. And I'm so stinking happy that Clem survived all the way to the end. If you seriously have to play these games by now, like, I highly recommend you do so, even if you watched this and got spoiled on everything. I just, I recommend it so much. It's something that should be played by everyone, and, like, it's so accessible to everyone because, um, the collection disc exists, so it's easy to play all the games, um, back-to-back -back like that. And also, it's just an easy game for non-gamers to get into because it's all about choice-making and not really about the combat. I... If I had to, like, rank the Walking Dead games from favorite to least favorite, it would probably be, uh, first place would be the final season, second place would be season one, third place, uh, would be, uh, third place would be, I think, the Michonne game, actually, fourth place would be season two, and then fifth place, dead last, would be, uh, season three, because that game's kind of trashy. Like, I remember when, like, I was trying to avoid reading up any sort of interviews or like seeing the trailers beforehand but um i wound up seeing an interview that said that confirmed that the garcia family would not appear in the final season and when i read that i just burst out laughing i was like they're so useless none of them matter that game does not matter you could just skip it it's so bad and stupid 
I was just so stinking done. Like, when I read that, I was like, literally, none of it mattered. Because if they're not going to return, then, like, what's the point? What was the point of meeting them? Like, I'm really trying to think about it. Like, what if you didn't play Season 3 if you skip it? Could you just go from Season 2 to Season 4? Kinda. Like, you get a little bit confused as to, like, how Clem lost the baby, but it gets explained in the recap, so you're good to go. And, like, you really don't get explained to how she got him back until season the end of Season 4, so it's fine. Oh my god, I don't know, I just have so many problems with Season 3. But Season 4, like, it's a completely different game. I remember being blown away by the uh, graphics upgrade when I saw, um, when it, from the jump to Season 2 to Season 3, I thought that was incredible. And then the jump from Season 3 to Season 4 is even bigger. It's insane. It doesn't even look like the same game, but, like, the graphics are the best it's ever been in this one. And that credit song, I, I've lost count of how many times I've listened to Safe and Sound, and I'm so happy it isn't uh, copywritten, so I was able to include it in the video. Um, it is a beautiful stinking song, and I absolutely adore it. The graphics were amazing, the music was amazing, the characters were so stinking likable and smart and intelligent this time around, and it was the happiest ending I could have hoped for. Everything was perfect. I absolutely adored this game, and it is my game of the year for 2018, and currently also 2019, because it's sort of a weird situation in which it's a game that exists in both years. But yeah, that's all I really have to say. Thank you so much to Telltale Games for sharing this beautiful story with everyone, and thank you so, so much to Skybound Entertainment for making sure this story got finished. It would have been absolutely terrible if this did not get finished. It was a very scary situation, and I don't know what to expect for the future of any other Telltale projects. Will we ever see The Wolf Among Us 2? Will we see Stranger Things? I don't really know, but... That really shouldn't be a concern. I'm just incredibly grateful that we got The Walking Dead and that this game got finished. That's all I can really hope for, and I am going to continue to be grateful for that. So, thank you. Thank you for making sure this game got finished in the way that it was intended. And thank you for making sure that all the people that worked on this franchise uh, were able to get this story finished just as they wanted. And of course, thank you all so much for watching. I know The Walking Dead isn't exactly everyone's favorite thing to watch on my channel, but I think season four has been the most popular out of all the seasons just because of how much praise I've been singing about it. And it's also the, the end of an era. It's so weird that like, I'm, pl I'm planning on Let's Play Mario games and Pokemon games up until my very last year of Let's Playing. I have, like, the schedule all planned out where, like, it's all going to be evenly spaced apart. But for The Walking Dead, it's done. It's over. I can't Let's Play another Walking Dead game. I really, like, there are some rumors floating around saying that they're going to make more, but it's called the final season, and the company is bankrupt, so... I 100% doubt it. If it does happen, I'll be kind of furious. I'll be a little bit happy and be like, oh yay, more Walking Dead. But then I'll be furious and be like, it ended perfectly. Don't you dare ruin this. Um, As for the other Walking Dead game, it's called Overkills the Walking Dead. I don't expect that game to pop up on my channel anytime soon. I'm, I kind of got into this franchise specifically because of the Telltale gameplay, the, the choice making and the stats and everything. That's what I enjoy the most about it, is getting attached to these characters and having my own story. I don't really know if Overkill's Walking Dead is like that. I don't even know if it's out yet, but um, it intrigued me a little bit, and like, I might get into it. That's, that's probably going to be a stream, if anything, so look forward to that in the future, maybe. But for now, we are done with Walking Dead. Nothing can ever top Clementine's journey, so uh, don't hold your breath for Walking Dead to return to my channel. I'm also still on the fence on whether or not I want to let's play Life is Strange 2. That might be a stream in the future just because, like, I loved the first one, but I absolutely despised 
before the storm to where like I felt like really burned from it and I kind of don't trust the company to uh, make a good game again so I'm kind of hesitant to let's play that because I don't know how it's going to turn out so if anything it's probably going to be, be a stream so if I do decide to let's play at the last second then that'll be another M-rated LP but at this point in time I'm okay with just sort of ignoring it I was also thinking about it, um, not only is this the last Walking Dead Let's Play on my channel, this is one of, if not the last M-rated Let's Play on my channel, I think, uh, let me just look through my list right now, actually, because I do have a list of, like, every game I want to Let's Play and, like, the order in which it's going to happen, and at this point in time, I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah, at this point in time, uh, The Walking Dead, the final season, is the second to last M-rated Let's Play that will ever appear on my channel. Everything else from here on out is going to be either rated E, E10, or T for Teen. There is one more M-rated game that I want to Let's Play, but I'm not sure if it could happen. That's your only hint. You probably might have an idea on what it is, but... There might be some complications in getting it on YouTube. We'll just leave it at that. So, it's kind of incredible that it's the last, like, second to last M rated game. It's kind of like with uh, Pokemon Emerald. When I finish that, that's the second to last Game Boy Advance Let's Play I'll ever have. And Mario Party 3 is my last Nintendo 64 Let's Play. It's weird to talk about these things that, like, all these things are coming to an end. Like, I'll never Let's Play another Nintendo 64 game or. I'm almost done with M-rated Let's Plays. It's kind of weird, like, I could finally talk about that stuff because I'm in the second half of my Let's Playing journey, and we're almost finished. Some things are coming to a close. <sighs> I don't really know what else to say. It was just, it was an incredible journey, and I'm glad I got to be a part of it and see how it all ended. I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play, and I hope you'll enjoy whatever I have in store for you in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and for going on this journey with me. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later in a new, more peaceful world.